Hi everyone, welcome to the IoT Hero Show, my weekly showcase of thought leadership on the Internet of Things. My name is Tom Raftery, I'm the Global IoT Evangelist for SAP, and now, on with the show. Hey everyone, welcome to the IoT Show. We are at Sapphire now in Orlando, and with me I have Martin. Martin, would you like to introduce yourself? I can do. I'm Martin Wazowski. I'm the Chief Designer and Futurist for our Chief Innovation Office at SAP. Super. What is that? Yeah, I know. Well, uh, it is a person that writes strategies for um, so, sort of foreseeable to unforeseeable futures, basically beyond the horizon where we stand today, beyond the two, three years of the promise we kept or keeping to the market right now, trying to figure out what would be the next and the new steps, the two new horizons, if you wish, for SAP to live in, to, to, to improve people's lives. Okay. And what do they look like? These horizons? Mm very exciting, this is how they look. Uh, so I love this space because it's uh, so unexpected and so fast, it's exponentially faster in development each time you look. And luckily it's imaginable. Okay. So uh, I usually say that you cannot predict the future anymore, uh, not, the, not the 10 years ahead even, uh, but you can build a spectrum of possible futures, sure. uh, possible ways people will work, make business and live um, and then we can choose the desirable ways from that spectrum, so a smaller spectrum, from a very long list to a long list. Sure. And then we um, take a stand and a subjective uh, opinion, a, st a strategic point of view as we call it. We say, oh wait a second, in, in this short list, SAP can play a significant and positive role in, in, in our innovation strategy. And any examples that you could think of, of things that are going to happen in the future that we should be preparing for now? Yes. Uh, basically, well, four things that are main themes in our innovation strategy. The first one is the self-running enterprise. Uh, what we see is that a lot of thing can be out, things can be automated. Mm -hmm. A lot of things that we do today at work are repetitive, sometimes even boring, and they are pretty known. Right? So the, the processes, the, the behaviors we have, the routines we have at work, how could we automate them? How can we study them, the enormous data these things produce, to produce this kind of automation? What that would give us is a much higher value of human work. So we have automated tasks, routine tasks, and then we have the freedom to, to act as humans in that. So this is the first dimension. Um, an example of that would be machine learning, spotting logotypes in brands, uh, advertising on TV, for example, in quick sports, even like, like hockey. We can spot the brands and give direct results. That's happening today. Yeah. But if you extrapolate that, you can have a whole bouquet of functions that can be simplify your business, you can stand on and they run. Secondary would be uh, self-organizing business ecosystems. Um, so much more people are empowered to come into the market today. We see Asia with three billion new connected people, new connected beautiful minds within the next five years only. Uh, mind you, we have only 3.8 connected people today. The whole homo sapiens history, we will almost double the things. They will do business. They will be empowered to start a company, company of one. They will connect in, in a network of networks to exchange their gifts to, to, to that market. Who can help them? How can you trust them? And if, as, as machine learning would be the key enabler for the first dimension, here blockchain would be the enabler. Yeah. And the third dimension would be something that Bill McDermott touched upon in his keynote. He called it the augmented humanity. We call it the augmented me. Well, in the end, we have 10 billion of us that are uh, augmented. Basically, we take decisions as we usually take decisions. We are biased in a certain way. We do not have the spectrum provide of us all, all the information or knowledge, as, as we should call it, in front of us before, before we take it. How about augmenting out with, with that information? So we are almost superhuman. Oh, you can say, oh, I know that. You know, like Google Maps does today, or, or your eyeglasses do today, to make you a little bit more than, than, than you are. Yeah. Data, information, becomes knowledge and then sort of a wisdom that makes you basically take fantastic decisions beyond your own bias. That's that superhumanity. And the last one, uh, purpose. Uh, I mean, the last thing that will merge with machines is curiosity and purpose-driven seeking of new ideas, new markets, new business models, I guess, yeah. in the far future. How can we quantify purpose? 
or how can we qualify purpose to, to into your books even. Maybe that's a moonshot. So we're studying how to do that. But we see also examples, just one, where, for example, Patagonia, uh, we usually say that, okay, it's an outdoors clothing company, they make a nice jacket. But there's a reason they do that. They want you to wear that jacket so you can dare to climb that little hill over there, look out and say, oh, this place, the earth is beautiful. And they go, yeah, we know, that's what we wanted you to discover that because we're in the business of, of uh, saving the planet. We just happen to make jackets and SAP is in the business of improving people's lives. We, we happen to make software, excellent software. And when these four dimensions come together, we, we think it just heightens the intelligence in your enterprise with the applications in there. Make sense? Makes sense. Martin, that's been fantastic. Thanks a million for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Pleasure.